look at the, how many people are here. Unbelievable. That is a good-looking crowd, oh. sir. Good-looking hey. crowd. Thanks, everybody. Oh, my God. Everybody looks so great. The audience is 99% women, too. Unbelievable. Our, our audience demos are just incredible. Oh, my God. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you again for coming out to one of the most prestigious awards, award events of the season, Jack. No expense was spared on tonight's festivities. We have people from all around the world here with us. Some of the biggest names in the industry like Larry and Philip. Uh, they're here to celebrate some of these awards that we have here today. And then also big shout out to Billy who uh, essentially went to different countries to mine the piano black plastic that is on all these trophies. So Yeah, he went above and beyond. And this is the Savage Geese 2023 Cars of the Year Award uh, or award show. And you need to thank someone, Mark. We wouldn't yeah. be here without a special lady in your life. Yeah, that's right. I really wanted to take this time. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. But, uh... Thanks, Donna. She made me egos, Jack. You wouldn't believe the egos this woman made. Oh, it's incredible. She gave you the drive to be here. Now, yeah. let's get into All the right. awards. Starting with... Best Affordable Sports Car of 2023, and this goes to the Hyundai Elantra, and we forgot to tape this award, so if you were an eagle-eyed viewer, <laughs> you already know, but the reason why we are giving it to the Hyundai Elantra N, specifically, or if you're in the United States, Hyundai Elantra N, um, is that it does everything well. It is a good track car, it is a joy to drive, it's a car with a long warranty, you could use it as your only car very easily, it's a good highway vehicle, and it's affordable. It's somewhere in the mid 30s, which is unbelievable to say it's way cheaper than a Civic Type R, a GR Corolla, a Golf R, and it's not much worse than a Civic Type R, and it gives you basically the same amount of fun as that vehicle. It is a very compelling car. It's, it's an odd one. It's one of the few cars, other than the Miata, that you would say, hey, you know what? I don't have an ass load of money to have fun in a car, and it's a car that you can get in and instantly be excited to drive. Like you drive it and you feel a sense of huge amount of joy and fun. It puts a smile on your face. And you can't say that about some of the other fun cars or supposedly fun cars that we've driven over the past year. Uh, and the price tag is what you see and you can maybe even get it for less. You're not, yes, the Hyundai dealerships are not the greatest, but you're not gonna walk into it with a surprise $10,000 markup uh, like the Civic Type R and the GR Corolla. And that, that says a lot and that's why also, it's just a great car. It really is amazing. So hats off to them for spending the time to make it right, to make it dynamically good, and all the other things that go into fun cars. It's proof that Hyundai can build a very enjoyable car when they sweat the details. Other honorable mentions, the Integra Type S sort of does everything great. It is a lot more money, though. Yeah. And obviously, you have the Miata on the GR86, but those were cars we've talked about in previous years. Right, for sure. And they're not cars you could really use as your only vehicle either. There yeah. are definite compromises in day to day usability. Let's, go, let's talk about the next award, Mark. Yeah, let's go into uh, this guy here uh, Best Truck. There's a lot of trucks, and depending on who you are, you're probably going to argue this, but there's a reason why this one. The Ford F-150, Jack, and here's the thing. When you talk about some of the best-selling products in the world or the most popular music or the po most popular movies, what you will see oftentimes is those that sell the best are not the best cars or products. In the case of the F-150, a lot of it is because Ford has put so much money into it. There's so many different trim level options for so many different types of people, from work trucks all the way up to like the Raptor R with a, you know, supercharged V8 that does crazy things. And it's a, a real truck, right? It's not a marketing gimmick. And that's why it sells so much. The support network, when you sell a million a year, yeah. that means supply chain is there, aftermarket support's there, a normal shop can work on it because they're so plentiful that this is, it's just an amazing truck for what it is. It's it, incredibly well thought yeah, out. Absolutely. Uh, two other honorable mentions are the mid-sized new trucks this year. The Colorado is dramatically, dramatically better than the old Colorado. It is a good truck, and the new Tacoma is also a very compelling offering in this segment. It is a much 
more competent vehicle 360 than the Tacoma it, re it replaces. I think some of it, it goes back to the F-150, right? It pushed the boundaries of trying to do trucks different while still maintaining what the truck was. They weren't trying to, you know, like, I don't want to get into this too deeply, but they, they knew what the truck had to be while improving the engineering. And they made it. it almost an SUV. Yes. It's just day-to-day -day usability. Yeah. All right, Mark, the next award. Let's get into it. It is going to be Best Compact Car 2023. Oh boy. There aren't many compact cars left. <laughs> so it wins by default? <laughs> it is the Toyota Prius. The reason we gave it to the new Prius is that it does everything great. It's a car you can tell they put maximum effort into, despite, you know, there's a lot of other brands abandoning this segment. It's affordable, it's usable, it looks good, and compared to the old Prius, it actually drives quite well. Is it a perfect car? No but it's a vehicle you can tell they put a lot of time and effort into and they cared. Yeah, and I think you'll see, you're seeing that now with Toyota with some of their other cars, like the Camry that's coming out and the Crown. Like they, they realize to keep these segments alive, you have to do more than just like regular updates. And these cars are perfect examples of they should last, they get great fuel economy, they're usable, the technology works, mostly works. And uh, one of the huge benefits is again, the the resale value of these things they don't completely lose their ass in depreciation which makes them far less disposable than some of the other like luxury like products a, or like a leaf for example yeah, if you yeah. Buy a leaf now. Uh, right so uh the other runners up were of course the civic the civic was last year's winner um and this is again uh, about what we what we experienced this year yes bad time to mention this but when it comes to the qualifications for these awards it had to be a car we drove this year yeah. had to be a car that you also can buy new. So there are no old cars like the NSX or some of the other older vehicles mm -hmm. we drove this year. So just something to note in the background. Of course, the reason why there aren't more categories is Mark Blue, all of our budget on awards to himself. Yeah, I finally decided that I deserved it. Um, when, when you're on Zoom calls now, there's gonna be that award for best Zoom call behind you. I, I'm everything this year. I've won an award for pretty much everything. The best lover, uh, best communicator, <laughs> uh, best artist. Uh, best negotiator, best nice. businessman. Incredible. All right, Mark, <laughs> let's move on to the next award, which is the Snoozer Award, and that is for most boring, least inspired brand. And that goes to Volkswagen. And yes, before you say anything, I, I do know that they make the GTI and Golf R, and both are great cars, but their regular vehicles are now all old and relatively uninspired, minus, say, the Tiguan, which is actually pretty okay. The Atlas is ancient, the Jetta is ancient, they killed the Passat. Their EV vehicles that are here are horrible. It's a shame because that brand for a long time was very, very good. It's uh, kind of what we looked at with Toyota's problem, right? When you turn into such a commodity brand and you're so big, you have so much money, there's so much overhead, so much complacency, I think you create a culture of you have too many people, too many old ways of doing things. They're just like basically like that's good enough. Everything that they do feels like it's just good enough. And I know in 2024 there's going to be some major changes to the interior layout of a lot of their cars too to kind of fix some of these problems. Um, but everybody's gotten better, and all you have to do is just go on their website and look at their configurator. It's an easy way to fall asleep. And to me, you know, like I want to see progression. I want to see like effort, and there's just not a lot there. At least this year we didn't see a lot of yeah, it. Yeah, you compare that to Hondas new products this year, or Hyundai or Kias, VW left some something on the table for yeah. sure. Yeah. Um, next car, Mark, let's let's do it on your end. All right, we got this bad boy right here, my, my Flapjacks. The Flapjack Award for Best SUV of 2023. Uh, this is a very hard one. The Honda Pilot. Um, I think if you watched our content on the Honda Pilot, uh, you'll understand uh, why I yeah. feel the way that I do, but Jack, can you explain that for us? It is the perfect middle ground in the space, and it doesn't feel like a penalty box to drive. It may not be as big as a Grand Highlander, but it has near minivan levels of usability. It may not get the fuel efficiency of a Grand Highlander, but it isn't a total like penalty box to drive around. There are good dynamics, there's good usability, they have good residuals, and they are affordable vehicles to buy. It is a complete package while it doesn't do necessarily anything brilliantly does everything pretty well yeah and you could argue all of these vehicles in this space are basically npc right they're just uh you're you're driving them in in sleep mode half the time like you're you're not fully aware 
And I think, and I said this, I say this a lot about family vehicles, and that's what this is about. Like the SUV market is replaced sedans and minivans. So most of the people that are buying this, it has to do everything. It has to be reliable. It has to have like the the you're not going to lose your ass owning it. And after all of the 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 shiny shit wears off, how is it to use it as a real car six months from now, two years from now, and it's one of the least frustrating vehicles that you could possibly get into use in terms of technology, physicality, storage, uh, and it blends, to your point, it blends everything together, and that's why it's here this and year. And unlike something like the Grand Highlander or the Kia Telluride, it isn't a miserable car to drive. Right, right. You haven't zapped all the joy to driving with the TBD rear diff, it gets in out of corners well, even naturally aspirated V6, which has some character to it. It is sort of that complete car. Are there SUVs better at certain yeah, categories? Yeah. Yes, but it is what we picked. Honorable mentions for other SUVs, the premium class BMW X5, yeah. great SUV. And of course the Honda CRV, the hybrid variant, does everything well. It feels like a price category above. It's very refined and it is a, it's probably our favorite compact SUV. And the CX-90 could you get slotted in there for what they tried to achieve. I, like they, they really tried. It's like the opposite of like the VW award, yeah. right? Mazda's trying so hard to, to, to go to this new direction. Uh, and this that will probably be there. It's just not there yet. They got more work to do. But again, like you want to see effort. And that's, that's the thing. You want to see that they're trying to separate themselves and they want to be in this space that is absolutely flooded with overpriced vehicles. So the Honda did a great job uh, being a real car that you could buy today. Speaking of expensive vehicles, <laughs> this is the performance car of the year for 2023. This is for cars north of $100,000. Is it your, your Corvette? No, it's, <laughs> yeah, my Z06. No, it is the Porsche GT3 RS. Um, simply put, it is one of the most impressive vehicles I've ever driven regardless of year. It gives you that experience, albeit it's not the same as a cup car, but it gives you some of that cup car race car experience and a vehicle that you don't need race engineers and a trailer and all the other inconveniences and cost associated with a car that is this mechanically proficient. It is encapsulated everything I love about track driving. It gives me new experiences that I haven't had before. Crazy high downforce street cars and all of the electromechanical systems are nearly perfect. And all you have to do is speak to any other engineer from any other brand and they will tell you what is the best driving car, GT3. They have really figured out these vehicles and it is a really special car. If you have the money and you're willing to pay the asinine markups, it is the experience you won't forget if you ever get to drive it eight or nine tenths on a racetrack. Removing the price out of it just for a minute and obviously that's the joke of this and there's going to be a joke and some like low blow you can take with every car, uh, but there's honestly nothing to joke around about with the GT3 RS. It is dead serious. The people that worked on this, it's a culmination of careers worth of work that went into aerodynamics, bodywork, suspension tuning, transmission tuning, engine tuning. It is the pinnacle of what you can achieve in this era of sports car without just adding excessive amounts of horsepower to it and the EV marketing crap yeah. where you're just like, oh, look how fast it can go in a straight line for just the, this period of time. This car leaves you walking away with, this is why people love cars. This is the best that you can do with a street car that is a performance car on top of it that you can drive around places and then go to the track. It, it, it's the vehicle that you buy that you look back on and you're like 30 years from now, you know it's gonna be worth money. The people that around you that wanna know it what cars are. It could be like were, a family heirloom, yeah, it's that it, impressive. It is, it's just, a, it's a s unbelievably special car when Porsche does things to this level. Um, man, I, I, I have the, nothing to say that you could possibly say negative about it. All right, there are some other vehicles I wanna give shout outs to. Lambo STO or the Lamborghini STO. Probably the most joyful cars I've ever driven, V10, and it was built around, they knew they couldn't build a car more mechanically proficient than a GT3, so they built a car in their eyes that's more fun, yeah. and it's such a joyful experience. I know not a lot of people care about that car, yeah, yeah. but I highly suggest you watch that video. I think that, that was my favorite video that I did all year. There's a lot of videos we did, but that was one of my favorites because there, there's something special. If you wanted to sell somebody on why people love the car experience, remove the Lambo badge, remove yeah. the color, remove everything about brand, uh, what your, your brand prejudice is, go watch that video. And that's exactly why people love cars. That, that's all you have to say. 
There's yep. very few cars that just make you like, I get it, I yeah. get it. If you don't like driving that car flat out, there's something wrong with you yeah. or you just don't like cars. The other two vehicles I'm gonna quickly bring up, E-Ray. The Corvette E-Ray gives you a lot of the experience of hyper expensive vehicles like the 911 Turbo S and the McLaren Artura for a much more affordable price point and under $100,000, but it is still too much money, is the Mustang Dark Horse. For $70,000 or more, it is just an asinine amount of money for a non-Shelby Mustang. But if you can strip that away for a moment, it is a very, very good driving car. Great dynamics, good ma manual gearbox, great engine, and it was our pick in its class when we did our comparison test. Yeah, the, the asterisk is the price on the, you know, Again, everything's too expensive. I'm not gonna lie, like great car, too much money, makes it largely irrelevant at this point. Uh, but the Corvette, back to that, you know, look at what they've been able to do with that brand lineup and they continue to expand it out. You may not be into the whole like hybridized V8 mm -hmm. thing, but what they're doing is the same thing that the 911 brand is it's doing. It's an affordable Porsche 911. Yeah, that you could buy these cars, you can go and buy them and not like, have to deal with some of the shit that Porsche is dealing with with price inflation to this to the extreme. So Corvette is uh, especially doing doing great things for like the enthusiast community. Yep. All right, Mark. Let's get into our next award for worst vehicle of the year. Yeah, this one, you know, I had to do I, this one kept me up at night. I'll tell you that. And the, all the votes came in. There were three. They're all, all you. All me. <laughs> the Toyota BZ4X. Um, I think. Let's start this up by just saying, all you have to do is say the name a couple times and you realize why. Beyond it, Zero 4X? Beyond Zero. This car is soon, and I'm sure everybody in North America and Toyota, which had nothing to do with this other than maybe like validation testing and all that. Like nobody, I can't imagine anybody's it's like, a black oh, spot on oh that brand. man, this is, <laughs> I can't believe we did this. This is one that should have been flushed down the toilet right as soon as they started having problems with it. it, it I think it purely exists for the regulation, the regulatory process, just to say they had an EV, not because anybody was really passionate about it. They shit this car out. It's a car that's gonna be forgotten as like the Mitsubishi i -Meave. You know, like this is an example of what's wrong with a first generation product. And the silver lining is they set the bar so low with this car that anything they do now after this, people are gonna be like, Oh man, look how great they did. It's like you're going to be ch ch stumbling over yourself because y this is such a turd. Maybe. On the uh, flip side though, Mark, let's 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 look past some negativity and let's let's give out our most prestigious award. This is for car of the year. Any category, every category. And uh, Mark, let's let's tell the men and women out there what uh, what they are what we're awarding. Yeah, this is pure four karat gold and uh, ultra premium from Bulgaria. Yeah, I don't know. let's see where is it from. Yeah, Bobby. Uh, <laughs> anyway, this is pure automotive grade wood veneer, and uh, we didn't spare any expense. I, I expect trophy. this brand to be putting it in their lobby next to their CEO's desk at all times. I hope so. Everybody takes these trophies real seriously. Well, what about all the brands that come into the auto shows with uh, I expect these awards reps, if you're watching, we're going to ship these to you. Yeah, please please put this on your pallet jack in your trophy you're going to give case. Ted Kaczynski my address and <laughs> afterwards. Yeah, I think the, bad, the thing peeled off when I pulled the tape off. Of course, it's a Porsche, right? Big no. shock, Jack. No, it is not. It is. <laughs> it goes to... or no, And it doesn't go to my Z06 either. It goes <laughs> to the Lucid Air Sapphire. While I will be the first one to tell you this is an ultra expensive EV that is largely irrelevant to the mass majority of people because it's not making a lot, it's very expensive. The reason this car wins car of the year is what it represents as a milestone for the automotive world. It is proof to you and I that you can get into an EV, you know, over 4,000 pounds sedan and still instill driving joy in a way that no other OEM has figured out. This car is my favorite four door vehicle I have ever driven. It is a car that can be a great highway vehicle. It's a car you can be an absolute baboon in, and to close out this video, you'll see me terrorizing poor Mark. I, you can do entry speed, 100 mile an hour power slides all day long and chain them together easily. And if you're the one person in the world who wants to track one, around our track in 108 degree weather, it was less than two seconds laps slower than a GT3 and a C8 Z06 on Cup 2Rs. This is a remarkable piece of engineering. Yeah, and I, I you know, the brand, regardless of what you think about how they are running and who's running and all that, I think the background, what, 
why I spent so much time doing the video on this car, it was like an hour and a half, is the people that are, are, were working on this car, they didn't care about the background noise. Like they just wanted to make a really good car. They wanted to take everything that they loved about cars and put it into an electric sedan, uh, which meant it wasn't just about, look how fast I can go in a straight line. And to be fair, this thing is insane in a straight line. Like it's, it's no joke, but it was, that was just one piece of it. You can make an electric car fast, we know that. But it was about what you do here, the choosing the right electric power steering setup, how it transmits things that are going on through the car. It's about the braking system. There's no brake by wire here, which proves you don't need brake by wire in an electric car to make the braking system and the stability control system work. Uh, there's so many different layers of it from the, the subtleties in aerodynamics to the body structure and how they package it together and the use of the the electric motor design is incredible. Yeah. It shows the best of what you could do today. Absolutely the best of what you can do today in this realm. And it gives you the hope for the future. And that's what this award is. Like, you know, you wipe your ass with awards. But it's, it's a sign of what you can do today and the hope for what you can do tomorrow as that technology it's, improves. It doesn't have to be doom and gloom. No, it this doesn't. This is proof that if no. you have, in the case of David and... John and Esther and all the people at Lucid that we've worked with, it's proof that if you get passionate engineers who care, who don't listen to all the background noise and they're very, very bright and they care about transmitting some level of joy to you versus yeah. just some box that goes quickly in a straight line, These you can do remarkable names things. were on this. Like, yeah. I felt, unlike a lot of the brands where, you know, and, and this is n not disparaging other people, like the honesty of big, huge corporate machines in brands that are legacy. You have 25 different layers of management. They're too big, they're too yeah, old. Yeah, what level engineer you are, blah, blah, yeah. blah. Yeah, and you wind up just like, I, you know, you go to so many meetings, there's only so many fights you can go where you lose, where you start to check out of your job. You're there to get your job done, you do it to a credible amount, and then you're on to the next project. This brand is different because they're doing something different, and you know, the survivability is also there, but their names are baked in. They wanted to do a good yep. job. They felt a part of it, and you don't get that with a lot of the old brands. And it's a blessing or a curse for Lucid. We don't know where they're gonna be. I, you know, I like what they're trying to do here with the pure engineering message. That may not be enough, but it's proof that they did it, and this car is representative of, it's a, it's a blueprint of how to move forward. I hope, and that is one of the reasons why we're giving them this award, is that this technology and this focus on the finer details filter down into more affordable vehicles yeah. that enthusiasts can buy and people who love cars. So when they get in their EV in five, 10 years, they don't hate themselves for driving some appliance. Yeah. With that, I want to thank all of our Patreons, all of our viewers for making all of this possible. 2023 was our biggest year when it came to projects. And I also have to thank all of our automotive reps, people like Trevor from GM, uh, our, our Porsche friends, Kyle, Luke, Calvin, Shelby, uh, Frank, all of these people that we work with, Lynn from Honda, Andrew from Acura, make, and Sam from Ford, make all of this possible. They really do spend a lot of effort in helping us tell these technical stories. Mark and I always talk about this. The thing that I want to focus on as well, a lot of this stuff like GT3 RSs and Sapphires on a tanium to regular right. people, I'm trying to, or we're trying to answer the hows and whys between all this stuff and let some of you live vicariously through our experiences. And at the end of the day, these are just cars. So we're trying not to take this too seriously either. Yeah, and I mean, that's part of it too. The brands and the people that we work with, a lot of the reps, and we could go on and on with the list. What we really love is that, you know, you can't take this stuff too seriously, right? Like this is, it, it is a job, but it is a passion. And we get, everybody gets so self-absorbed and self-obsessed and it gets nauseating how serious things get. I hope that some of our work gives that spark to be like, hey, people actually appreciate yeah, this. And you want to go be an engineer. Yeah. And the people that are watching this appreciate that amount of information and a lot of the reps, they know that people appreciate that more than just the surface level stuff that is constantly like regurgitated. Not everybody cares about marketing. And I know that our audience doesn't and we, we, we really love the, the technology and the, the, all the stuff that we've learned. So big thanks to everybody, including Audubon Country Club. Uh, Ron, Mike, Craig, Kyle. Audubon Country Club is why we can do a lot of these big videos, yeah. a lot of these big tests. And without them, this wouldn't be possible for us, at least in the degree that we're able to do this. So if you love driving and you want to learn how to drive, become a member of Detract Days there. They are our biggest supporter in the Illinois area, one of our biggest supporters in the U.S. So huge thanks to them. With that, though, 
Uh, here's a clip of me terrorizing poor Mark in a lucid sapphire around our racetrack. And uh, Merry Christmas to your families, Happy Holidays, and of course, uh, Happy New Year's. Uh, best wishes from us to all your loved ones. Thank you. Thank you for everybody for celebrating me. Steve Bomber ain't got shit on me. Honestly, what does that mean? That is oh. how you should be driving this car. Oh my god. Holy shit. Oh yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> ah, 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 ah. Oh yeah, I'm the grand. <laughs> oh my god. Don't yeah. do it here, don't do it here, don't do it here. <laughs> oh. 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 Oh, oh my god. Oh my god, bro. <laughs>